Is it really an election if we only have the illusion of choice? This is Skywatch TV News for Thursday, September 17th. I'm Derek Gilbert. In studio, a couple of special guests, Pulitzer Prize nominated investigative journalist and the executive editor of Charisma Magazine, Troy Anderson, and a veteran broadcaster, commentator on the History Channel, Fox News, and a professor of eschatology, uh, Paul McGuire. They are the co-authors of the book, The Babylon Code, forthcoming from Faith Words Press and uh, gentlemen. Um, we're into the election cycle. The uh, Republican, uh, the next Republican debate, I think, is going to have 11 different candidates. Um, the Democratic field is somewhat amusing in that Hillary Clinton appears to be losing to an open socialist, uh, which I think just confirms what we thought we knew already about the Democratic Party. Setting that aside, um, we're being told again as Christians that the 2016 election is the most important presidential election of our lives. But we also heard that in 2012 and 2008, 2000, well, going back to probably Bill Clinton's first term. Um, can we, through the election process, take America back for Christ? And beyond that, has America ever really been a Christian nation, Paul? Well, the, 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 the most disturbing thing is that uh, you talked about the illusion of choice. So we're given this illusion of choice, Democrat versus Republican, conservative versus liberal. But as we point out in our book, The Babylon Code, the same powerful elite controls both political parties. So it's the old expression, it's Council on Foreign Relations Choice A or Council on Foreign Relations Choice B. The same program with minor changes goes forth. I believe we need to pray for our nation. I believe every one of us need to vote. But people need to really, really be discerning and look through the illusion. Just because somebody makes a prayer, just because somebody says they're born again, doesn't mean they really are. So um, I think looking to our politicians or a political party to save us, I think the Bible warns us against that. That's idolatry. Uh, Messiah, the Messiah doesn't come out of the Republican Party, and he doesn't come out of the Democratic Party. Mm. Troy, I'm, I'm kind of curious, your, your uh, assessment as an investigative journalist, um, I got started in broadcasting at a small radio station in Illinois, basically doing the news and having to call local police departments to get, you know, their daily reports to see, you know, traffic accidents, whatever, that we could report on the local news station. But it didn't take very long, even as a young, you know, cub reporter, if you want to use the phrase, to learn that the news is filtered. Uh, when I interned at a news station in Chicago, I learned very quickly that different stations, uh, reporters from different stations, when I went home and watched their reports, were apparently in a different time zone from the story that I saw. Um, your assessment of the media coverage of politics today as an investigative journalist, how accurate, how objective is it really? Um, you know, o over the decades that I've been a, a journalist and a reporter at newspapers and for magazines. You know, I, I, in, in the old days, uh, you know, a couple of decades ago, there, there was a lot of investigative reporting, a lot of digging that went on. Newsrooms were far bigger, and so a, a lot of things, you know, were, were revealed that people didn't know about. My impression today is that there's there's far less of this going on, and, and the news does seem very skewed. And I think the public is, is picking up on this, that the, the mainstream media is not really telling us the full truth. They're, they're sort of whitewashing many things, and there's a, definitely an agenda there. And so I think the the public is is voting with their feet. You know, we're, we're seeing, you know, a lot of growth at, at Charisma Media. Mm -hmm. Other conservative outlets are too. And, yeah, and I've got the and, app on my phone. Yeah. And so, you know, people are, are, are looking for the truth. They, they want to know what's really going on. And so, you know, they, they have a, you know, they either have a suspicion or a sense that the, the mainstream media is not giving it to them. And so we're, we're seeing that happen today because well, of this. Here, here's a question. Um, because this is something I, I've noticed here recently in the last year, and, and it's, it's troubling to me. Um, I, I think it's good to have a healthy uh, uh, skepticism when it comes to the news that comes from the media. Uh, in fact, a lot of the stuff that I view is just to figure out what the media wants me to think. Mm. Um, but how far do you take that? And the reason I ask is that I, I, I'm seeing people now who are productive members of society who refuse to accept anything that the major media publishes, and yet they're willing to accept everything that anonymous user 1234 on YouTube posts <laughs> as gospel truth. How do, we, how do we use discernment in trying to filter our information content? 
Well, that's a really excellent question and one that I've personally had to face and Troy faced not only in the researching of the Babylon Code, but just daily research. We know that the, the mass media is controlled by six corporations, so there's a uniformity of information and yeah. a flow of content. But as you said, you go into the internet and you know this uh, website and Area 51 and whatever, it doesn't mean it's true. Just because it's conspiratorial and it's inflammatory, it doesn't mean it's true. So I find a great deal of my own time in research, especially on the internet, is weeding out disinformation, complete distortions. The internet is not a guarantee of reliability, so you still have to use discernment. And I think the Holy Spirit living inside of us, besides using our God-given brains, is one way we can do that. Yeah. Uh, Troy, information sources, um, you know, people looking at the world around us. We're looking at the economy right now. The government's telling us unemployment's at 5%, which according to the Federal Reserve means we've got full employment in the United States. You know, I can tell you just, you know, a few months removed from my career as an outside salesman, that's bunk because I saw a lot of guys who weren't working as long or for as much money as they were, uh, you know, or their fathers were, say, a generation ago. Um, how do we find reliable information? And I guess as, as we see things around us that are ominous, troubling, where do we find hope? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you've, you've touched on a very uh, important, uh, uh, you know, phenomena in today's society that, you know, the government gives us all kinds of information that's that's sort of suspect, you know, like the 5% unemployment rate. You know, if, if you look at other, you know, studies, they say it could be, you know, 20% or even higher, the, mm -hmm. the sort of the real unemployment rate. Yeah. And so there's, there's all kinds of like, you know, sort of manipulation of, of data and information. And so it's hard to sort of ferret out what's really going on. And, and so I, I think the, the source of our hope in today's world is in the Bible. You know, it, it, it's it, you know, going to a good church, a Bible-believing church that teaches the Word of God. You know, it's, it's going to, you know, media sources that, that you, you know, you, you determine are trustworthy mm -hmm. and, you know, that are, that are, you know, adhering to, the, to the, the Word of God. And so, you know, as people try to figure out, you know, what's really going on in the world, you know, go back to the basics. It's, it's you know, the Word of God and, and, and the source of all hope, Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, circling back around to politics again, as we do approach a, a, an election, um, understanding that our choices are somewhat guided for us, how much participation should Christians have in the political process, Paul? Well, I think the Bible makes it very clear we're to submit to government. And what does our government ask of us? Well, one of the things our government asks for us is to vote and to participate in the political process. So even though the political process is skewed and somewhat controlled, our vote does matter. It's not going to, quote, save us, but it does matter. So I believe every Christian needs to pray and be involved in the political process. Mm. Troy, your thoughts? You know, one of my recent columns was, was encouraging believers to, to, to vote, you know, as part of our civic duty. And, and the church, you know, or Christians in general have had, sort of had an abysmal record of voting. And in, in the time that, you know, we've sort of done this, we've seen the country, you know, really sort of you know, decline, you know, the morals, you know, our government leaders, you know, we see a, a massive decline. I think everybody sees this happening. So it, it, it is important to vote. And God, you know, does call us to pray for our leaders and, and to do our civic duty. And, and so I think this is very important to, at this time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and many faith leaders are, are saying that it's very important to, to do what we're supposed to do here. Mm. But ultimately to not depend on the political process to right. save us. We, right. you know, as much as we would like to see it happen, we're not going to vote Jesus under the Supreme Correct. Right. 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 The, the book is The Babylon Code. It is forthcoming in the month of October. Paul, uh, Paul McGuire and Troy Anderson uh, are, are the authors, and uh, we appreciate you gentlemen stopping by today. Uh, look for them on future episodes of Skywatch TV. And meanwhile, we thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.